Well, hello there. So, what you've got right there is my latest acquisition. That is a Sun Enterprise 250 server. Now, it might seem medium sized or small for a computer when you look at it from the front, but as soon as you look at it from the side, yeah. And that was a, a car honking right there. But this thing is deep. It is really deep. Let me measure it. 70 centimeters deep. I kid you not. It also weighs about 50 kilo. That is 110 pounds. For those of you who don't want to use a proper measure system and well that's about it for its extremely large physical characteristics now I got this for 30 euro and well I, it was a pickup only item in eBay and well I just couldn't pass it I couldn't pass a computer, well, a server, that was about $17,000 when it came out for only 30 euro, which is around $35, or maybe 37 And, well, yeah, let's take a look at it. So, I mounted you on a stool here with my well if you know who this is <laughs> it's rather an amusing an amusing meme uh, I do actually like his music but yeah I've mounted you on a stool with a mouse mat so the phone doesn't slide around and so I can actually move you around the computer because moving the computer itself uh, it's gonna be quite hard so, let's take a look at the front. Here we've got... This seems to be the host name, or its past host name. Sun Microsystems logo, best logo ever. Uh, I think this is a 2.88 meg floppy drive. Don't, don't quote me on that, it might be a 1.44 meg. But it is a 3.5 inch floppy drive. It's because he... CD-ROM drive and the DDS3 dat drive. Then we have the key switch, which is a signature of Sun's systems. We have various positions. Actually, let me get the key. you know I've misplaced the key oh there it is so this is the key with a rather lovely uh, Sun Microsystems logo if the camera will focus of course it never does or oh, whatever you, you can imagine it and it has four positions we have standby or off. We have on, diagnostics, and locked. Then, well, I'll actually leave the key there. Then we have some status LEDs. We have something. I did have no clue what it, what that is. We have. Maintenance, which means something is wrong with your server. Why the heck doesn't this want to focus today? We have something else. We have hard drive activity. We have temperature, well, over temperature, I, I suppose. And we have power. And we have a lovely Ultra Spark driven logo. Why isn't this thing focusing? Yeah, 
yeah, it's it's rather annoying. So yeah, that's about it for the front. Let's take a look at that lovely Sun logo. Then we have this, which is the disc door. Let me... Right there. Sorry for the camera work. Um, I don't even have a camera, so... The same key that operates the key switch unlocks this door and you just open it up and you find space for three three and a half inch ultra 320 SCA well sorry ultra SCSI uh, SCA drives with an SCA uh, SCA 80 I think it is SCA 80 connector right there this machine came with two Seagate Cheetah 10k RPM drives, 9.1 gigs. And two Hitachi. No, sorry, Fujitsu. Two Fujitsu 10k RPM. Um, 9.1 gig drives. The four of them are Ultra 2 and then I put in this drive which I had laying around. It probably doesn't even work anymore but at, at least I have the spot trade. I've had this drive for quite a long time. Uh, a friend of mine gave it to me. He just found it in the street I think and it is 147 I think. Yeah 147 gig. Hitachi drive, which isn't period correct at all for such a machine, but whatever, it fits. Oh, also the the really thick door for the drives has some sound dampening foam. Let me see if I can get this piece of metal out. I can show you. Come on. There we go. As you can see, a lot of foam here, which is still good. Surprisingly enough, all of this foam is still good. Real nice. Let's put this back in there. Actually, I think I should have put the foam into the middle thingy and then the entire thing here. There we go. Look at all of look at all this RF gasketing. Why isn't okay? There we go. Look at all of this RF gasketing. They were, sh they were uh, pretty concerned about RF here. So yeah, there we go. Let's lock the front door. And let's take a look. Well, nothing to see in the sides. Nothing to see in the front, apart from some marks. And let's see in the back. We've got redundant power supplies. We've got these two, which are massive, absolutely massive. Actually, let me take one out and see if I can show you. These are extremely long. You just, to remove them, you just take these thumb screws. They are redundant and this system is N plus one redundant so that means pretty much it can run on one power supply only. And let's take the, this out. There we go. Now that's what I call a power supply. In here it's, uh, 
it's got two huge connectors and well as you can see it weighs quite a bit actually but as you can see those are the specs right there it's only 365 watt per PSU and let's take a look at the ports in the back we've got parallel sun keyboard and mouse two serial ports twisted pair ethernet AUI Ethernet. These two are shared. You can't you can't use them both at the same time. We've got Ultra 2 SCSI, low voltage differential, single ended. And then we've got the SSP uh, the SS sorry, the SSP yeah, no, RSC. Well, it's pretty much the same thing. SSP interfaces, which are serial port and an Ethernet. Now let's take the side panel off. Just quite a big and heavy side panel. Actually, let me mount you on the stool. Let's see if I can move this system a little bit. you back on this tool here there we go Now this thing is extremely heavy. It is extremely heavy. It weighs about the five kilo maybe. Yeah. And let's take a look. We have system owner operate without side panels installed. We have what this panel is. Guide on Populating the RAM, guide on populating the CPUs, and uh, a little cheat sheet on how the PCI slots are configured. And let's now take a look at the inside of the system. So, let's start from the bottom. Down here we've got three, well, three, 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 sorry, three of them. 33 megahertz PCI slots, 64 bit, uh, five volt. Then we've got up here, a s oh, it is a 66 megahertz. That's cool. 66 megahertz, 3.3 volt, 64 bit. PCI slot. Moving up, we have the CPU modules. There's only one installed right here. This is an Ultra Spark 2i, 400 megahertz, with 2 megabyte of cache. Up here, we have the DIMM slots for the RAM. It has four banks for DIMM slots. And I think the RAM has to be installed in groups of four, not only in pairs, but in groups of four. And yes, yeah, you can see this system came with no RAM, which is a shame. Up here we have massive wires, like these are thick, really thick. Uh, they are also silicone insulated wires, 
so they're really soft and bendy and these carry low voltage high amperage current from well, the, the power back plane which is back here let me these connectors are also pretty massive as you can see pretty huge See if I can plug that in with one hand. There we go. Right here we have the fan tray. This has three 120 millimeter 12 volt Nidec Beta 5 fans, which are well quite powerful. These are the fans, I think, that the, at least the same series, that the Mac Pro and the Power Mac G5 have, except those are grey and these are, well, black. Oh, as you can see, they're three-bladed fans. They are, they are actually surprisingly quiet. The only thing you can hear really is the motor hum when they're running at low speed, or at least that's what I've been able to hear. As you can see, so far, I haven't needed a single tool to service the system. Here in the front, we've got the drive cage, which you've seen. And right here is the removal media uh, bay, which has the DAT drive, the CD-ROM drive, both are SCSI. And the floppy drive, which is a standard PC floppy drive. And well, yeah, actually, I think that's about it for this server. Oh, maybe I'll show you the CPU module. You take the CPU module by removing these two levers, pulling on. Yeah, sorry for the sloppy camera work. You just pull on these two levers, like so. And this is the CPU module. You can see some heatsink there. Of course, I, I gotta go farther. Actually, here's a model number. Oh, wow. This thing really doesn't want to focus today. Come on. Come on. Nope. Nope. It ain't doing it. It ain't doing it. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. As you can see, you remove this module by doing that. Just pulling on this tab. Do that, and it comes off. The cover comes off, and we've got these, which are probably the UPA bus. Uh, I think it is a crossbar system, so that might be why there are two of them. This might, these are, well, you know, the controllers, the bus controllers. Then we've got four cache modules here for cache chips. And under here is the UltraSpark 2i CPU module, well, CPU package itself. Yeah, it's quite a sexy looking device. This doesn't have those round uh, heat sinks, which I really like. Which, well, Sun and IBM gear of this era seem to have. But yeah, it's cool nonetheless serves its, its purpose. Let's put this back together. Let's see, this has two rails that it fits into. There we go. And to put it in, you just push this until the levers, the levers just catch on a little indentation right here and you just pull the levers inward and there goes the CPU. Now I'm going to ask you for something. 
And that is, if you've got RAM for this, and it's cheap to ship it to me, I am in Spain, please contact me. I would like RAM uh, for this, for this system, since, well, I can only find pairs on eBay, and I would need at least four sticks. Yes, I move three fingers, it's actually four. I need four sticks to get this running. And, well, yeah, that's about it for the server. I'll give you a last look at the front. And, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching.